Hi everyone, so this is the second video for Forensic Chemistry and Toxicology. I hope that you are all well today and I hope that this video will not bore you. First, stress you with the concepts discussed here. I'll try to have this lecture as short and comprehensive as I could, but should you have questions, please let me know either through the comment section below or through our group chat or GC. I'd like to start this lecture with a trivia, and I hope that this one would inspire you to continue learning forensic chemistry and toxicology and to pursue BS criminology in Wimso Pagadian, of course. So did you know that um, although the methods in forensic science are highly scientific, it owes its beginnings to cops who relied heavily on observation and common sense? So some time ago, Arthur Conan Doyle wrote something that one historian has called the century of the detective. So that term refers to a time when criminologists first began to apply scientific principles to the solution of crimes, which paved the birth of forensic science. So take a look at these photos. Do you know them? The first photo is Sherlock Holmes, a fictional character, a fictional private detective created by Arthur Conan Doyle. Sherlock Holmes' fictional forays into crime analysis coincided with a period during which law enforcement officials were beginning to use fingerprints, blood samples, and other physical and biological traits to acquit the innocent and convict the guilty in murders, assaults, burglaries, arsons, and other crimes. The second photo is the Director General of Bidea, Aaron Aquino. We also have the third photo. So, of course, you know him. So that's Mark, your classmate. Hi, Mark. I had to include your photo in this presentation, being the first to submit the activity from the previous video. I hope that's okay. You see, you could be, you see, you could be the one chasing or the one being chased to. The choice is actually yours. But while you are still making your choice, let's start our discussion on drugs of abuse. I've mentioned in the previous video that the role of the chemistry in forensic science is mostly the conduct of different analysis of a wide type of evidences. So for this session, we will discuss the different drugs that are considered illegal in the Philippines and how these drugs are analyzed. Why is there a need to do that? You see, there are a number of drug-related cases reported in our country and in other countries. The Republic Act 9165 or the Comprehensive Dangerous Drugs Act of 2002 is the blueprint of the Philippine government against illegal drugs. PIDEA or the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency is the lead anti-drug law enforcement agency responsible for preventing investigating and combating dangerous drugs controlled precursors and essential chemicals within the Philippines. Before going into the list of prohibited drugs, let us first learn some of the drug-related terms as defined and described in RA 9165. For further readings, I've included in the description box 
The link where you could find essential information about RA9165. So for the terms, you will be encountering this most of the time uh, in the future. So we have clandestine laboratory. So this would refer to any facility used for the illegal manufacture of any dangerous drug and or controlled precursor and essential chemical. We have confirmatory tests, which would refer to, an, to the analytical test using a device, tool, or equipment with a different chemical or physical principle that is more specific, which will um, validate and confirm the result of the screening test. You may also encounter the terms cultivate or culture. So this would refer to any act of knowingly planting, growing, raising, or permitting the planting, growing, or raising of any plant, which is the source of a dangerous drug. Deliver would refer to any act of knowingly passing a dangerous drug to another, personally or otherwise, and by any means, with or without consideration. Then dive or result, resort sorry, is a place where any dangerous drug and or controlled precursor and essential chemical is administered delivered, stored for illegal purposes, distributed, sold, or used in any form. The word dispense would refer to any act of giving away, selling, or distributing medicine or any dangerous drug with or without the use of prescription. Drug syndicate is any organized group of two or more persons forming or joining together with the intention of committing any offense prescribed under this act. The employee of DEN, dive or resort uh, would include uh, the caretaker, helper, watchman, lookout, and other persons working in the DEN, dive or resort employed by, by the maintainer, owner, and or operator where any dangerous drug and controlled precursor and essential chemical is administered, delivered, distributed, sold, or used with or without com compensation in connection with the operation thereof. We also have the term financier or financier any person who pays for, raises or supplies money for, or underwrites any of the legal activities prescribed under RA-9165. We also have the term illegal trafficking. So illegal trafficking would refer to the illegal cultivation culture, delivery, administration, dispension, dispensation, I'm sorry, manufacture, sale, trading, transportation, distribution, importation, exportation, and possession of any dangerous drug and or controlled precursor and essential chemical. The term instrument would refer to anything that is used in or intended to be used in any manner in the commission of illegal drug trafficking or related offenses. The laboratory equipment would refer to the paraphernalia, apparatus, materials, or appliances when used, intended for use, or designed for use in the manufacture of any dangerous drug and or controlled precursor and essential chemical, such as reaction vessel, preparative or purifying equipment, fermenters, separatory funnel, 
flask, heating mantle, gas generator, or their substitute. So we have manufacture, which would refer to the production, preparation, compounding, or processing of any dangerous drug, and or controlled precursor and essential chemical, either directly or indirectly, or by extraction from substances of natural origin, or independently by means of chemical synthesis, or by a combination of extraction and chemical synthesis, and shall include any packaging or repackaging of such substances, design or configuration of its form, labeling or relabeling of its container, except that such terms do not include the preparation, compounding, packaging, or labeling of a drug or other substances by a duly authorized practitioner as an incident to his or her administration or dispensation of such drug or substance in the course of his or her professional practice, including research, teaching, and chemical analysis of dangerous drugs or such substances that are not intended for sale or for any other purpose. Take a break first. Eto students, ha, joke ito. I may not be able to deliver it in the funniest way ever, but um, please know that while I'm telling you this, my mind is already laughing. Okay, so what type of cosmetics can you find in a criminal's bag? Ano? So, ako na ang magtatanong. Total, ako lang din naman ang sasagot. Okay, so what type of cosmetics can you find in a criminal's bag? Eddie, Chadang, criminal lipstick. Yay! Okay.